I'm a cultural orphan. No, I didn't lose my parents. Both are still thankfully with me today. What I mean is that I have no specific culture I, I identify with. Some people know this better as a third culture kid. Other people don't understand the concept. What do you mean you don't have a culture you identify with? Let me explain my situation, and then maybe you can understand what I mean by it. My parents are from the Philippines. My dad loves telling the story of how they met in college, and it was a slow but steady type of love. A couple of years after they both graduated, my dad moved to Thailand, following his brother who decided to get his master's degree at a university called the Asian Institute of Technology or AIT. A year after that, my mom followed. And a year after that, they decided to get married. It was at this university that they decided to start their family. And a year after they got married, out popped their eldest daughter, me. And this is where my confusion in terms of my culture starts. At home, my parents spoke Ilongo to me, a Filipino dialect and I ate home-cooked Filipino meals. The church that I went to was comprised mainly of people from different uh, backgrounds, but most of them came from the Philippines. So that was the language I heard when I was a toddler. When I was of age to go to school, my parents put me into an international school. The, uh, the language was English and the curriculum was American. I had to interact with my classmates in English and did all my schoolwork in English. As a school, we also celebrated Western holidays like Christmas, Halloween, and Valentine's. The people around me though, they were anything but Western. As an international university, the students at AIT came from all over Asia. This meant that AIT was a very diverse campus. This diversity bled into the elementary school as the children of the students also had to get educated. Some of my best friends while growing up was a Nigerian girl <clears throat> whose mom was a teacher and a Japanese friend who yanked me into the fandom of One Direction. I grew up playing soccer with a Pakistani boy and participating in talent shows with a girl who was half Thai and half Indian. A fond memory that I have is celebrating Indian Diwali during November, where my parents would let me join our neighbor two doors down, out in the grassy patch in front of our apartment building. We'd stay out until 10, playing with the sparklers and watching the older ones set up fireworks. Then I'd sit on the steps and watch them sing and dance in a language that I didn't understand, but knew it spoke of happy and joyful times. I also enjoyed watching a community of Nepalese celebrating Halloween where they put vibrant colored powder on their faces and wear elaborate henna tattoos on their hands. This weird mesh of cultures all happened within the boundaries of the campus, but outside the gates was Thailand, where people have a strong sense of who they are as Thai people. We celebrated Thai holidays like Songkran or the Thai New Year and Loi Pratong. Whenever I went out of the campus, I'd have to communicate in Thai and be very aware of the customs and traditions of those around me. I've always accepted the fact that I had this weird mesh of cultures around me, but I never realized how much it isolated me from those around me. To my classmates, I'm that Filipino girl, strong and confident and apparently a pretty good brownie baby. Whenever I visit the Philippines, however, my relatives called me the Thai cousin, who prefers basketball over volleyball, and who excelled academically. This, this meant that I didn't have a set identity. I fluctuated between Thai and Filipino. Growing up in a Filipino household gave me some of that Filipino culture, as obviously my parents had. But combined with an international school and the fact that I was living in a foreign country showed me that I don't have a solid Filipino culture. And that caused a slight identity crisis within me. 
Where do I belong? Do I call myself Thai or Filipino? Or am I none of those terms? The specific term cultural orphan never occurred to me until my social studies teacher made that analogy. What exactly brought this topic had long since left me, but I do remember him coming to a realization before exclaiming, oh yeah, you're basically an orphan. I was confused and slightly offended at first, but then he explained what he meant, which was basically my life story of how I don't belong anywhere. Funny how my social studies teacher knew more about my life than I did. Since that interaction, I've been thinking more and more about my situation. It wasn't until recently that I stumbled upon this specific definition. As I was scrolling through the internet late one night, as teenagers do, I came upon the phrase cultural orphan. It is a sense of loss and alienation, and a kind of anxiety in the search for self. On visiting the cultural homeland of our forebearers, we might feel a certain kind of consolation but we are unable to identify with it as our cultural home. This phrasing isn't my definition. I am not that philosophical to coin a new term. No, this was first coined by Singaporean playwright, theater director, and arts activist Kuo Pao Kun. I like the word identify in that last sentence. We are unable to identify with it as our cultural home. That, I think, is what it means to be a cultural orphan. We can't identify with a certain place to call that place home. And for a while, it was actually quite depressing. I used to feel uneasy whenever I thought about things like this. I have many friends who are also in the same boat as I am, and we have these long talks about how we never really belonged anywhere. I have one particular friend who told me that whenever she would go back to the Philippines, she would feel out of place as she didn't speak the language. She would have a hard time communicating with her grandparents and her cousins and would feel left out when they would laugh about jokes since she didn't understand the word. So even though Filipino was supposed to be her language, she couldn't communicate in it. And that left her feeling isolated and different from those that were supposed to be her family. However, there is a bright side to this, one that didn't occur to me until recently. That bright side is that we have a much easier time adapting to the globalization that is happening all around us. What do I mean by this? I mean that it has already been instilled in us to be open-minded and accepting about everyone and the different cultures surrounding me. Like I mentioned earlier, I grew up with a bunch of different cultures. From such a young age, I had to the exposure to different people and food and appearances and clothing and languages from around the world. This exposure makes it easier for me to be more open-minded about the other cultures. Being open-minded is now more important than ever before. Cultures are no longer staying in their country of origin. They are spreading everywhere. With the internet and faster travel times, we can be halfway around the world in less than a day. This global expansion means that there are going to be more people to interact with, to meet, and to be friends with. These people are not always going to be from the same culture, same ethnicity, or same background as you. And as a cultural orphan, I'm prepared for this. I've accepted the fact that I don't belong anywhere. I may be a Filipino by passport and by blood, and, I'd be, and I may be Thai, born and raised, but these places are not where I belong. Not really. I belong to the world. With my fusion of cultures, it won't be very difficult to add one or two or a hundred more. And my culture is an uninternational one. And I think that's a more pleasant way to describe oneself. So what can you learn about being a cultural orphan? First of all, like I've been mentioning, being more open-minded. See things from other people's perspective and try to understand their position. 
We can't always understand why some people do what they do because we don't have the same background that they do. Their culture might emphasize some values that ours doesn't. So it never hurts to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Secondly, respect everyone. There are many do's and don'ts in other cultures, and it's always good to ask if you can do something. It's good to know these rules in society so that you can be sure that you won't offend anyone and that you'd have a better time adjusting to those around you. These are just some of the lessons that have been infused in me from growing up in a multitude of cultures around me. It has taught me to be more open, more understanding, and definitely more friendly. It's easier for me now to think of the other person's side, even if it differs greatly from my own. And all of this is because I am a cultural orphan. Thank you.